I keep saying how important response time and input lag are on high refresh rate monitors, but hopefully one day people will listen. Now the HP Omen 27C is a 1440p curved 240Hz VA monitor, and in this review you're going to see how it compares to its major competitors, and furthermore if it's actually worth its price tag, because in the UK it can be found for £450, while in the US it can be found for around $500. So jumping straight in, we're going to talk about the good stuff, and that is of course when it comes to its gaming performance. Now I'd just like to mention here that if you are looking to run 1440p at 240Hz consistently, you're definitely going to want the right to GPU and CPU setup because it is quite intensive for any sort of game and of course if you're even playing a potato looking game like Counter-Strike then it won't be as much of an issue but I just thought to mention it in case people are looking to get this monitor to play other games out there such as let's say Halo Infinite or Destiny 2. Now when it comes to its input lag I had it tested at 5.75 milliseconds now that's perfectly acceptable however it should be mentioned that in comparison to some of its competitors, namely from Samsung, Alienware and also AOC, the monitor isn't as responsive when it comes to its input lag and as such doesn't make it as good of a pick in comparison to its rivals. Similarly, when it comes to its response time, my overall experience of it was somewhat mixed. When dialed in terms of its maximum overdrive, level 5, there was some serious inverse ghosting that could be noticed when you're playing a little bit of a lighter game, or for example if you're panning around different scenes and you're not going to be faced with darker scenarios. If you do face darker scenarios then you might actually notice that level 5 overdrive is actually not too bad and therefore is definitely playable. Ultimately, here, if you want to get the best out of the monitor, you'll want to run it on level 5, but just bear in mind that you will have some inverse ghosting. As such, I had to run it on level 4 mode because I found it to be the best blend between the response time and the overall visual experience. Suffice to say that, yet again here, the monitor's response time doesn't quite stack up to some of its competitors. So moving swiftly on, you do also have MPRT, which you can enable through the OSD. Although it's worth bearing in mind that you can't run run it simultaneously with NVIDIA G-Sync or AMD FreeSync and indeed here the adaptive sync option will disable the MPRT modes. Now here you do also have a few different MPRT modes to select from and depending on the level you select, be it from level 1 all the way to level 5, it will lock the brightness. In its level 5 mode it will be pretty dim and as a result if you're going to be using MPRT mode you might want to resort to using this either in a dark room or just accept that your monitor will be pretty dim when you're using its highest level. Now moving on we get onto AMD FreeSync and Nvidia G-Sync and here I could test the latter with my RTX 3080. While connected over DisplayPort I had no problems outputting the Nvidia Pendulum demo and whereby I had no sort of artifacts or black screen issues. Furthermore, I was able to run Destiny 2 simultaneously with HDR at 1440p at 240Hz while also having Nvidia G-Sync enabled. Now this also means that this monitor does have HDR capabilities, HDR 400 to be more specific. Now what I will say over here is that the overall HDR capabilities and the overall performance is pretty poor. It's nowhere near as good as the likes of the Samsung Alienware or AOC alternatives which reach the HDR 600 standard and as a result means that if you're going to be playing some HDR games the HP Omen 27C just won't look all that good. I just also felt that the overall colour accuracy was a little bit off and as such meant that when I was playing Destiny 2 I actually preferred running it on terms of SDR rather than HDR. Now with all of that out of the way I should mention that if you are a console gamer that you should be looking at a 144Hz or 120Hz monitor even if they exist instead of a 240Hz monitor. If however you are a PC gamer and a console gamer and as a result you want a monitor that does a best of both worlds you'd be pleased to know that this monitor does accept a 4K signal input and as a result means that if you're on PlayStation or Xbox you'll be able to run a virtual 4K. Elsewhere, if you do have an Xbox, you'll be able to run natively 1440p at 120Hz, and if you're on PlayStation or Xbox, you'll be able to run Full HD at up to 120Hz too. So with the gaming section out of the way, what about when it comes to image quality? 
Well, when set to its standard mode on the OSD, I had it tested via my calibrators at 93.9% .9 sRGB gamma coverage and 98% gamma volume. You can see here how it compares to the sRGB standard. Average LTE sat at 1.59 and a maximum of 4.97, which actually makes it pretty impressive when it comes to overall sRGB color accuracy. These Tessa's contrast ratio was seriously impressive, although no surprise given it's a VA panel at 2807 to 1. As for the brightness levels, I had it tested in terms of SDR or HDR at 450 nits, and here you can also see that its max SDR brightness in standard mode sat at 360 nits. As for minimum brightness, it does get all the way down to 30 nits, and here you can also see the MPRT levels and how that affects your overall brightness. Note the only thing to mention over here is between level 1 and level 3, the brightness remained the same. Now outside of of its standard mode you do also have the native preset that you can select through the OSD. Now this does have its pros and cons whereby it does unlock the overall gamut of this monitor giving it a wider color gamut positively impacting the Adobe RGB and DCI-P3 levels both in gamut coverage and gamma volume. However, when it comes to its sRGB color accuracy, it does significantly drop at an average delta of 3.47 and a maximum that goes up to 9.04. You can see here how the colors have been affected. Elsewhere, I did notice that the overall white point does seem to be skewed a little bit more than it should be in comparison to when it was running in terms of its standard mode preset. So with the color tests out of the way, what about when it comes to brightness uniformity? Here I must say I was actually pretty disappointed by the overall performance of the Omen 27C. Both in terms of the top and bottom segments it does pretty poorly. And I do appreciate this is somewhat panel lottery, but nevertheless I was just expecting a little bit more from this VA gaming monitor. Similarly, when it comes to the overall clouding and the backlight bleed, it is actually pretty noticeable, be it in terms of looking at the monitor straight on or specifically if you're looking at it side on. I don't expect many people will be looking at it at an extreme angle like the images that are shown, but nevertheless, it's just something I thought to highlight because most VA panels actually do a pretty good job in this department, and alas, that's not quite the same case that could be said about the Omen 27C. So moving on to the monitor settings, it can be accessed through the Omen Gaming Hub, which is a software that's provided by HP. Now, if you want a further degree of customization, you'll want to go on the hardware-based OSD. Now, through it, you'll find a plethora of different options. Now, as I did mention before in the gaming section, MPRT mode will be disabled if you're running it simultaneously with adaptive sync. So in other words, the two can't be working in tandem. As for the response time setting, I'll leave it on level four, but if your eyes or indeed the game can take it, you'll want to run on level five in order to get the best out of the monitor. Other than that, the other settings, I'd leave them disabled. And as for the frame rate and crosshair settings, that's of course for your heart's content for you to enable or disable. As for the image, the brightness of course depends on your ambient light conditions. And as for black stretch and dynamic contrast, I'd leave this disabled. Sharpness at level four, which is its default configuration, is what I would suggest as well. As for your color settings, I did refer to these before, but standard or native would be your preferred selections. I would run it on standard for the majority of consumers however some people might want a little bit more of a better gamut and therefore native might be your better pick now the RGB gain adjust does depend on terms of every setting that you run so right now we're running standard and therefore it adjusts the RGB gains of the standard mode so you can have these set per mode now you can see over here I've dropped the red by a few notches 249 and one notch on green where I've gone to 254 in comparison to the maximum 255 of blue. Now as for the input, the power, the menu and the management, they're all pretty self-explanatory. The only thing I'd like to point out is that there is a setting for you to disable the power LED that is found at the front of the monitor in case you want an all black setup for example. Elsewhere you do have an information tab which is quite handy to know what resolution and refresh rate the monitor is currently running on. So with my settings out of the way I should just mention that this monitor has got a stand that provides height and tilt adjustments only. On 
unfortunately in comparison to a majority of its rivals it doesn't provide a pivot or rotation functionalities which I find quite a shame. Thankfully however you can replace the sturdy stand with a Visa compatible stand and as a result means that you can find the best ergonomics for you and of course have it on a multi monitor setup. As for the build quality and the design of the monitor I've got no issues whatsoever over here because I think it looks pretty stylish. Three side borderless design combination with an all black look as well means that I think it will fit in most desktop setups. Now elsewhere I should point out that the monitor has a singular display port and HDMI inputs. The USB type C input is only used for data transfer and thus not a display and therefore gives you the ability to use the two USB type A ports that are found towards the side of the monitor. And so this brings me on to my verdict of the HP Omen 27C and at the time of filming I just can't see myself recommending it over the Samsung Odyssey G7 which also has a 1440p 240Hz panel and comes in at roughly the same price. This monitor has a far superior HDR experience and furthermore better gaming credentials, in other words its input lag and response time are superior than the 27C. Elsewhere if you want to splash out some extra cash and want an IPS gaming monitor at the same sort of refresh rate and resolution and want a native G-Sync module among a few other features you might want to consider the Alienware or AOC alternatives. Now these will be all down description below including some other suggestions such as 1440p 144Hz monitors and Full HD 240Hz to 280Hz monitors all of which that I've previously reviewed. Now if you've enjoyed this independent detail review definitely do drop a like, subscribe and hit that bell notification. It is definitely appreciated and for those who have already done that I want to thank you in advance. As such I've been Totally Dubs and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.